we're celebrating our 25th park in one of the newest national parks, Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Find out why this hidden gem should be a must do when you're in Western Colorado. Welcome to 51 Parks with the News Dates. We're Howard and Caitlin, and we're on a mission to visit all the U.S. national parks in the lower 48 in our Winnebago RV. Each week, we're sharing where to stay, what to do, and introducing you to the people doing incredible work across our national parks. Black Canyon of the Gunnison became a national park in 1999. Its namesake canyon is 2,700 feet deep, carved over 2 million years by the Gunnison River. There is a north and south rim, but in today's episode, we'll be focusing on the south rim of the park along with East Portal Road. Our first stop was to set up camp at the south rim campground. This is another new state special for this campsite because if we were to back in, our fire pit and picnic table would be on the complete opposite side, like our slide would be right here. So we decided to pull in because there was plenty of room to do so. And then we're just gonna run the electric cable right there. Yeah, beautiful spot. Yeah, and then that way we can actually enjoy like the living space. It's so funny to me how a lot of these national park campgrounds seemingly are backwards. After we were all set up, we headed to the visitor center, which we always recommend doing. Even though this was our second visit to Black Canyon, it's always good to check current conditions. Plus, we got our passport stamp, sticker, and magnet. If you're planning on doing any hiking below the rim, climbing, or kayaking, you will need a wilderness permit, and these are all issued at the visitor center. It's also where you can check and see what ranger programs are being offered during your visit. In case you haven't figured it out, these are always a new state favorite. My name is Ranger Austin. Welcome. I've been working with the Green and Gray, Green and Gray National Park Service for about three years. I've worked at Shenandoah National Park. Oh. I've also worked at Wright Brothers National Memorial before oh. coming here. Uh, so this program is absolutely free. You don't have to have a reservation. It's going to last for about 30 minutes. All this land was uplifted 2,000 feet up into the air about 70 million years ago. But it didn't happen all at once. It wasn't like BAM! we got this big area uplifted. Did any of you notice that you drove up a mountain to see a canyon today? Canyons usually don't form this way. We're very lucky to have this geological formation here at Black Canyon. That earth uplifted. That's part of that driving up the mountain to see a canyon. It lifted up very slowly over time, fingernail length each year, up about 2,000 feet. And that was the Gunnison uplift, and that coincided with the formation of the Rockies and all these different other mountain formations you see around you. We had major volcanic eruptions happen on either side of the canyon of where we're standing today. They blew their tops, rained down ash and debris over in this area, and it created a common fold. So think about a roof, a roof of a house, and how it finds a gutter when it rains. So rain will hit the roof, with gravity, it'll rain down the roof, find that gutter, and be drained out. That's what happened with our water here. So all the water, just like roofs, it rained off the sides and slopes off of these volcanoes and mountains and the snow, found that common fold created by the volcanic ash and debris, and it started carving through that volcanic ash and debris, and it formed a channel for itself been carving through that for two million years and that's how we have our national park today so that's it that's the history of black Canyon. it's so easy to remember so do this with me do this with me grow blow flow that's it now you can teach all your friends and family how the geology happened and create the canyon here at our national park another amazing ranger program in the books ranger austin was excellent and we learned a lot that we had never learned before like what a mime to lith is that's a brand new word for us and now i feel like we are equipped to go out into the park and look for all of the animals that we can find in the rock formations so mime to liths are rocks that look like living creatures, either a human face or even animals or even mythical creatures here at our national parks. If you've been to Arches, you might have seen the Parade of Elephants. If you've been to Joshua Tree, you might have seen Skull Rock. If you've been to Shenandoah National Park, you might have seen the Stony Man in the rock. Um, you've also have all those amazing mime underground at Carlsbad Caverns that you might have to 
kind of tilt your head and you know wink your eye to see some of those but uh, all of those are mine to lips and again you know we've said this multiple times throughout our national park series but you should always check and see what ranger programs are being offered while you're at the national parks this one was really great because there were kids who were doing the junior ranger programs and they had their books all the way up to people who are in their 70s and 80s visiting the park from other countries and i think that is just so neat because it really appeals to all age ranges and austin did a really good job of making it fun for everybody. Black Canyon is so cool to me because unlike the Grand Canyon, which feels like it's very like much, it's like sloped, right? Black Canyon, everything seems very steep and sharp. And like, if you want to look straight down, well, you can look straight down. Well, thank you placard for the information. It's because of the sunlight that the North slope is steep and the South is more gradual. And that's because the North gets continuous sun. The south side in the winter tends to collect snow because that's the only time they pretty much get precipitation is in the winter. And the freezing and then thawing and then freezing again breaks up the rock, which then makes it a more gradual decline all the way down to the bottom of the canyon. Whereas on the north side, because it's getting that direct sunlight, the water will just evaporate away. So therefore it doesn't have the opportunity to freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and break down the rock. Imagine if you could drive to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Well, here at Black Canyon of the Gunnison, you can do just that. We're gonna be descending on the East Portal Road over 2,000 feet to the bottom of the canyon. However, the road is incredibly steep, has sharp turns, and there's a big old sign that says, if you're longer than 22 feet, including what you're towing, you should not drive this road. So that means if you're in a travel trailer, fifth wheel, you gotta park that up at the top and just take your truck down. Uh, if you're in an RV, I highly, highly would recommend not driving this road. Um, even if you're in a shorter or smaller RV, this is definitely something for a car, sedan, SUV. Driving down the East Portal Road is certainly one of our favorite things to do, and we would highly recommend it if you have the proper vehicle to do so. It's worth the time to come down and you get incredibly different views of the canyon walls, and you can really start to see how jagged they are and how deep the crevices are and where that name, the Black Canyon, really comes from because the shadows are creating the illusion that the canyon walls are a black color. It's also a beautiful place for a picnic, just to sit and watch the fly fishermen, or if you want to fish yourself or get a permit to kayak. It's it's absolutely beautiful down here. So now we're making the very steep climb back up. We've turned the AC off, which is very important. You don't want your engine to overheat. And we are slow and steady making it back to the top. <laughs> I don't remember it being 16% great. Oh, I do. You don't remember this? Yeah, we did this before when we were here with some of our friends and we drove all the way down. Oh. I definitely remember it being very intense. I remember the switchbacks. I just don't remember it being so steep. Yeah. amazing. That's one of the things that we love about Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park so much is that it's so easily accessible. There's one out and back road with several different overlooks. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. This one is dog friendly. You can bring your dogs out here as long as they're on a leash and you get different views of the canyon no matter where you stop. What, Caitlin? <laughs> Did you say no, 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 no? Said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> And that's also another thing. Some of these overlooks will really put you to the test if you have a fear of heights like I do, because yes, there is a nice fence here. It's very sturdy, but it is a sheer drop off. And as soon as you start to peer over, I mean, you can see all the way down to the bottom of the canyon. So <laughs> if you notice this death grip I have right here. <laughs> yeah, look, look at this. You just go. So we're here on a Saturday right now, and there's hardly anybody here. It's after three o'clock, which they say if you can beat the rush, because it's a smaller park to come before 9 a.m. or after 3 p.m. The sunlight right now in August is much better in the afternoon too, because of the angle of it, it's illuminating the canyon a lot more than the morning. So across the canyon, I can see some of the cars driving over on the North Rim. And unlike the Grand Canyon, it's really not that far away because this is a much more narrow canyon, but there are obviously no roads connecting the two. So you have to drive, I think it's about an hour and a half to two hours around to get over to the North Rim. We don't have time to do that on this trip, but Ranger Austin told us it is absolutely beautiful. And there is a campground over there. Ranger Austin said this is his favorite overlook and I can kind of see why, because you've got like a dragon 
I think a snake. And then that might be like a squirrel that is like kissing the nose of the dragon. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like when we were looking at the clouds. Winona, just look at this view. <laughs> Whoever illustrated these had a pretty dark sense of humor, I think. <laughs> We've come to the end of the road, but this is the start of the Warner Point Trail, which we did three years ago in 2020. We came back to the RV to grab Scout because we're gonna go on a dog-friendly hike that leaves right from the campground, and it will take you all the way over to the visitor center. It's about a mile long, and Scout is our adventure pup. She loves hiking. We leave Piper and Ella to relax in the AC because they are a bit older. Ella is now blind, so it probably would not be a good idea to take her on a trail like this. So Scout is very excited to get out and see what Black Canyon is all about. Are you ready? The Rimrock Trail is an excellent option for a dog-friendly trail because you're getting amazing views of the canyon. So we're really glad to see this. This is, I think, pretty rare in a national park to actually have a trail like this with like the main feature right there. Um, a lot of the overlooks are also dog-friendly. So if you don't plan on doing a wilderness hike down into the canyon, I would say this is actually a very dog-friendly national park. Out of the kitchen. Out of the kitchen, let's go. <laughs> Come on, out of the kitchen. I might have spilled a little shrimp juice because we're kind of leaning right now and it might have gotten down there, but they're cleaning it up. All this exploring calls for a very hearty meal. So we made um, some shrimp stir fry with a curry sauce and it smells delicious. We also love these. We cheat a little bit with the rice. Um, these are awesome. We buy them from Costco all the time and they're sticky rice and we end up splitting one for each meal. Pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds and it's ready to go. And here is our delicious curry. On our next episode, get ready for an epic journey across America's first national park, Yellowstone. From Old Faithful to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, epic bison traffic jams to incredible dining, you won't want to miss one of our most action-packed park episodes yet. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.